Interesting. Okay, let's talk about customs. Alright, so Dan is made by some harebrain... Wait a minute. No, hold on. Right, Dan, Dan's a canon character. Um, if you weren't aware of this, that's fine. You're one of today's lucky 10,000. I just want these to line up a little bit more nicely. Alright, so... The Dan's and the Sands. Um, gonna be brutally honest here. I think uh, I think people just aren't gonna get a great Sans experience in their first game. Um, I think he is the kind of character who, like, the first pass through the kit. You go, oh, that's what I was supposed to, okay, okay, that, that, that's what I had for that. That's the tools that I had. That's what I was supposed to do. That's, okay. And then the second pass, you're like, all right, now I'm going to start pushing these buttons and making them do stuff. So he actually feels a lot like the complexity order of a season two character. Uh, and some season one characters. Where the first time you play the character, he's just not going to work all that well. You're going to find some good buttons. Uh, and you're going to push those good buttons. Um, but you're not going to know how to really make him feel awful to play into. Uh, so, I'm not sure, I think, I think that he satisfies my desire for the boss tier, like, mill character. Somebody who runs out the clock on you, who exhausts you waits for you to give up. Um, I also think he's very hard to play. Probably the hardest to play of... Well, let's hold that thought. Because we've got more to talk about than the ones I'm used to. But when I made him, I think he was the hardest to play of the boss characters that I had run into yet. Dan is boss, you he beat Sans. Yeah, I mean, obviously. It's canon. Hey, if you click random boss, you'll get Dan sometimes. So, obviously, he's a boss character. Excuse me. Wait a second, did the... Huh. Interesting. Um, Alright, we're going to let Sans rest. I like Sans, but Sans is designed to be a lot of things. Uh, none of those things is especially fun for the opponents. Sans is uh, incredibly threatening. Uh potentially even overwhelming and definitely feels very unfair a lot of the time usually in plays in ways that feel cheap like sans has a turn one ultra does seven damage you can't cross out of it you can duck into it that's all you can do um sure you know just eat seven on turn one like that's brutal uh eight if he has the ex cost no cost nothing I, I, I love this design. I like this card a lot. It's not necessarily healthy, and it certainly can be frustrating to deal with, because it just is completely unfair. But I also think it nails the thematics that I wanted it to nail, so I'm really happy with it. Oh, and by the way, as a note, I did not make these frames or this graphic design. Uh, I designed the character slash the cards, but graphic design was the work of uh, Moriarty. So thank you, Moriarty. Um... Betrayal is such an obviously outsized card. Like, numerically this card makes no sense and shouldn't exist. Like, this 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 has a delta of 12. Like, it does 9 damage and it has 3 armor. This is totally broken. Um, more defenses than it could possibly need. It's disgusting. Uh, and the boost is probably better. Um, like, unfathomably strong. So, yeah. Weight of Sin. Uh, one of the worst attacks. It has a force cost, which might seem strange if it's one of the worst attacks in his kit. However, a force cost means you can invalidate it if you wild swing it. This is important. Especially because Sans will often end up having to wild swing at range 1. Because uh, at range 1, he does not have his big dumb threats. He has some good stuff, just not what he really wants to be throwing. 
Anyway, uh, also the opponent discards their hands. No limit to the number of cards that can hit. That is, you know, potentially game ending. Uh, in fact, when it hit me, if I recall correctly, uh, I didn't have enough force left to pay for my block to be able to block, like, to, to gain armor to not get stunned. So it stunned out my block because I didn't have enough gauge to cover it, which is absolutely brutal. So Weight, weight of Sin is essentially like the backbreaking command grab. Uh, Eviscerate in Galdred's kit is the same style. Color Spray in Eugenia's kit. Choke Hold in Gabrick's kit, or Gabrick, either way. Uh, and what's what's the Ultimate Atomic Buster? Yeah, Ultimate Atomic Buster in uh, Zangief's kit. Um, lots of just destroy all your resources. Taker has like a miniature one. He doesn't have one that wipes out your entire hand. It just as one discard. So he does not have that kind of choke hold, crush your opponent down to a certain number of cards. Oh, Satoshi also has one, which is kind of weird, but he does. Anyway. Oh yeah, and then the boost is important that he has, but not very good. Um, don't come back. Absolutely stupid. C like, utterly ridiculous. Completely godlike special. Um, you can never make a card like this. This this is horrifying. Um, so firstly, uh, the fun thing that I did, that I like that I did on this, is that it's push 8 and then plus 1 power per space the opponent was not push. Push 8 and exceed is the way that we implement push as far as possible. Um, because 8 is more than you can ever push. Right? Like, if you're, if you're, excuse me, here lads, um, wait, oh right, I have a search window open, doesn't work, uh, there, yeah, if, if Ryu and Ken, whoop, are fighting, as they do, and Ken pushes eight, well sorry, if Ryu pushes eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you, you just can't get pushed more than seven spaces. It doesn't work. So eight is actually excessive. Like, it's actually impossible. So, an effect that says push eight is just push as far as possible. Like, that's what it... That's how we template that, to be simple. Uh, and to be short. So, attaching a value based on the number of spaces not moved to push eight is quote-unquote cheating. It's getting around the, like, intuitive effect because that also means this is always going to have at least plus one power on it. So the card is dishonest. It, lo it looks like something that it isn't really. Uh, what it is, is a card that is above curve, so it beats dive, has four guard, so it beats most fast projectiles, uh, closes three, so combined with the guard, that means at range one it beats cross, and grasp, and anything fast, really, and has a high enough push to beat anything guardy, uh, that is close range, and so much damage that it beats anything that can't be moved, that relies on defenses. So it destroys focus, it destroys sweep, it counters assault because it, it guards through it and hits back, uh, outspeeds dive, doesn't get stunned by a cross, so it can catch it if you start at range 1, and doesn't get stunned by grasp, but it counterattacks it. It beats everything. Um, this, uh, this card loses to low tiger shot from range 1. That's about all you can say it loses to. Um, heck, it even beats if and Q because it speed ties. Uh, and yet the boost is probably more unfair. No, it's probably still less unfair. But the boost is in a timing that is illegal. It, it is a boost that has a timing of play when attacks are revealed, which means during the reveal timing, you can make a decision and play a card, which is just not a thing that should ever happen in Exceed. Like, you make some decisions during reveal, but few, and only as necessary. Like, whether you validate your 4 special or your ultra, and how you validate your 4 special or your ultra, sure. But this is full on, I'm gonna play a, a, another card from my hands during the reveal timing, which is uh, extremely discouraged, and should not exist, and definitely shouldn't be printed. Um, and yeah, strongest card in the kit. Pretty, pretty much, like, 100%. Uh, Double Cross is pretty mediocre, but it's also, like, such an obscenely good special that most characters would uh, like 
swap a random special in their kit out for this. Uh, maybe not most characters, but it's just incredibly safe and gives you hilarious amounts of positioning control from a wide variety of board states. Um, the boost is so good that it would make the attack unplayable, except that the boost returns to your hand, so you get to use both. So no drawback. Um, yeah, just amazing. Kind of low value as far as it go as far as these things go. Like, actually, is only one power, right? Like this is this is one to nine power. Sorry, two to nine power. This is one to question mark power. Probably like six to nine. Uh, this is one to nine power, effectively. Not power, damage, but similar. And this is one. Uh, and then Twinkle, which is the actually like most uh, abusive thing, probably. Because it is a loopable ignore guard speed seven attack. Um, it does not give you gauge. That is important. And the boost is also, like, really, really abusable. Because you look at your opponent's hand, spin a force, and play reading. Or play reading this doesn't seem like the best use of your time. Um, yeah, it's just unbelievably good. But also it's on an incredibly free, very, very safe attack. So if you do find a point where you need to use it, then you're giving up a copy of Twinkle. Alright, and then lastly, Mercy is, uh, Mercy's kind of interesting. Mercy, as an attack, is a lot like Unknown Kadaf in Umina's kit. Speed 6 with after seal the opponent's attack and then returns to your hands. It doesn't give you gauge, but it's reusable, which means you're basically just converting gauge into strikes that you're not participating in. Um, so, like, your opponent is slower than speed 6? Okay, they don't do anything. Their attack is sealed, gone from the game, removed from play, they don't do anything. That basically ends the strike. It doesn't technically, but it effectively does. Um, this also has, at the start of the opponent's turn, this is not part of the attack, by the way, this is like a... Well, it's kind of part of the attack, but it's not part of the attack that you play during a strike, right? At the start of the opponent's turn, you may discard this from your hands, and if you do, the opponent must initiate a strike, which then leads to being the end of, your th end of their turn, because they struck. So, you can change the board state in your turn, end your turn, discard this, force them to strike from a really disadvantaged position. Uh, it's a rich man's tech, but it does a lot more than just tech. Um, once you discard your mercy, you can truly make your opponent suffer. See you, man. And then the boost connections. Um, I mean, this... It is very important that he does not have a way to sustain a boost. Connections says the opponent is striking next turn. If they don't strike next turn, they probably lose the game. Um, certainly they lose one third of the game. If this card is in play for three consecutive turns, uh, it can win the game against any opponent. Uh, I think I think 100% of the game, like 100% of the time. But that requires the opponent to leave it in play for three turns, which will never ever happen. So, typically what's going to happen is you'll boost this, the opponent will strike, and then they have to eat a, you know, very free 9 damage betrayal, or something like that. Um, but yeah. It's not that good a boost. Or rather, sorry, it's such a good boost that it has to be counterplayed every single time. Um, and because of that, it's not that good a boost. But that's fine, because, like, this attack is thematic in a, in a way that I like, is kind of important, and is also a little bit, like, is low value. Because th this is very much a an attack that says you're, you, you're not losing. You're finding a way to not lose. You're not really winning. This does nothing to help you win, but it stops you from losing. Um, and that's important for, specifically, this character. Anyway, I'm very proud of Sans Design. I like him a lot. Um, we're going to try to go a little faster here, because otherwise I'll never get to the power budget breakdowns. Danica Patrick. Uh, Monado, but better, was this character's design. Character ability is literally Monado. 
gauge cost. Uh, I think also literally Monados. Overdrive. That's interesting. Overdrive on a character with a transformation discount. Uh, I already have been playing with this, but it's nice to see that somebody else is doing the same. Uh, because having a gauge discount on your Exceed means that Overdrive has fewer cards to work with, which is weird. So specifically this when you Exceed effects lets you stock your Overdrive, because if you Exceed with a heavy discount, you're not going to have much in your Overdrive. And then uh, whenever you seal any number of cards, uh, designer clarified, by the way, that's supposed to be one or more cards, you may then return a card from your sealed area to your hands. Insanely good, considering what this character can do. Shocking that I don't think I ever saw my opponent use it. Um, not sure that he noticed it. And then the Overdrive, which is just over Aruma, essentially. Like, it's it triggers at the start of your turn. Um, huh. I should clarify, but I am pretty sure that it's intended to reset just like over Um However, the wording on it is subtly different. This says your next attack. This says your attacks. I assumed it was like the Obergruma, because that's obviously what it's adapting. Anyway, um, this character was Monado, but much better, with fewer weaknesses. Harder to fight. Um, Jump the Sonic is strictly better Jump the Shark. Boost identical. Space Storming is strictly better Barnstorming. Uh, by the way, when I say strictly better, there are niche cases where having a higher speed or doing more damage is actually to your detriment, but those are extremely niche. So those are matchup warps, not like card properties. So Space Storming is in the Arcane matchup, potentially slightly worse than Barnstorming. But as a card, Space Storming is strictly better. Anyway. Um, Wizard of the Past is obscene. Like, Ugh. Outrun the Past is a. Uh, wait, hold on. No, that's. That's Weight of Regret. Yeah, Weight of, Weight of Regret is an incredibly good transformation, and uh, this is strictly better. So. Yeah. That. that yep. Uh. Strictly better. Capstan. Oh, for me. Strictly better Capstan. A little bit weird. Like, the, the, the recursion rider is not really necessary, I think. Uh, but yeah, like, being able to cross up with the before is relevant. Uh, and then the boost one ride is just exactly the same. Which is good. Flight 13 is strictly better Flight 13. And the transformation is identical to Outrun the Past. It's not. Uh, no, that one is Outrun the Past, yeah. Because it's Outrun it, because I'm fast. Yeah. Queen of Cards. Cars, excuse me. Uh, which is just the King of Cards art, but, you know, with Donic Patrick and throwing cards. Or cars. Blah. Uh, yeah, wait, this is literally, literally just King of Cards. Not, like, adapted, it's just the same card. And then it has uh, Hellraiser on the bottom, which is the same. So this replaces Hellward Bound, which is almost never used as an attack. So it obviously gives the character another attack that is generally available and does a ton of damage, and also on a character that has all the force that you want. So massive, massive upgrade. Uh, and then Strictly Better Streetcar, which is obscene, disgusting, insane. And then the boost is the same. So. Uh, if you want to know what that means, well, if I haven't done a Monado Power Budget video, ask me to do one later. But, uh, it means Monado, but much, much more so, which is oppressive and horrifying in the hands of someone who knows how to use Monado. Other than that, it's just somebody with really good stats all the time, which is also pretty good. All right. Now we're getting to the to the to the good stuff, because we got words for all these matchups. Um, 
Yeah, so burn our car. You have no defenses. Unless you have stun immunity. Or dodge effects, which are kind of like defenses. Uh, but you're fast. So, play good normals. Um, also, you seal your discard pile as the fight goes on, and you have no ways to recur it whatsoever. Um, this is very clearly important. Like, you have absolutely no recursion, which means you only get one deck. Uh, for the most part. It's technically possible that you'll get a reshuffle and have a few cards in your de in your new deck, but unlikely. Um, so yeah, you are going to be fast, and you have no defenses. So you don't have a block, you have parry. You don't have a focus, you have reading. You don't have a sweep, you have light. Uh, and you don't have defend, you have spike. Um, like this, this determines your your cards at at the lower speeds, like because you, you, you can't play the attacks. Um, sweep might be playable, either EX or in Exceed mode or EX in Exceed mode. But like these these four cards are played in these orientations. There's just nothing else you can do with them, um, for the most part. So, that's like the, that puts you on a track, right? Like it, it points you in a direction and says you're moving this direction. Okay, well, let's. I, I guess I guess we're going that way. Uh, gotta follow the track. Can't can't do anything about it. Um. All right. So, Shunts is just fast assault, right? Like it's good, but it's sp speed six. Yeah, that's good. Dominator is a perfectly acceptable boost. Uh, yeah, Crash is actually quite good. I think I mold for this. I think I saw this one was like, okay, I have an above curve opener. Yeah, let's let's look for that. Well, not counting dive. Uh, aggression is obviously good. It's in Noel's and Reese's kit, and I think a couple others. Uh, maybe like one other. Actually, it's not very common, but it will show up. Uh, takedown is just a spike. You know, this this does not particularly appeal to me as an attack, uh, but that's okay. I don't think I ever had to make the decision. I think this card was in my discard pile or as a wild swing or something. Like, I just never had it. Nitrous is cute. It's a very high cost for worse swift. Uh, but then again, this character can also make bank on that because one point is a huge, huge threshold when it comes to speed. Um, something that I think it was Taxi who, who stated this first in these terms. But uh, the difference between 2 and 3 is massive. Plus 2 speed and plus 3 speed are a world of difference. Plus 1 speed and plus 2 speed are different, but not as different as plus 2 and plus 3. This is a... Uh, why that is the case is a long story, but it's it's breakpoints and magic numbers is what it boils down to. It's the way that cards and attacks interact and exceed in the way the normals work. Uh, so an extra plus 1 on top of things is a big deal. All right, what's next? Train paint. Uh, th this this was this was this was what I needed, right? This is the card that you use for trading. It's in the name. Um, it's so like you've got your your good assault, like your fast assault. You've got your ranged thing, and then this which you will play. Um, just play it. There's no like you can play the boost. But only if you have Road Rage in hand, so otherwise you're, you're playing this attack. Road Rage, by the way, uh, good long range move, it's just a rolling grab that hits the entire screen. Um, which, you know, not bad. Like, that's perfectly reasonable. Sometimes you just gotta get across the entire map. Not very scary, but certainly useful. The Train Pain is absolutely the star of the show, it's definitely the best of these specials, definitely the most important one. Ultras... Uh... <sighs> Burning Lap is really good. Again, just be fast, go in, deal damage. Uh, oh, but, you know, it's got this boost on it, so... Oh man, Showtime's pretty good, but it's got this boost on it. Man! Uh, yeah, I think I just played the boost here with no hesitation, and then I don't remember seeing this boost, uh, like, in my hand. I remember seeing it in, my, in the kit. But like I think I just played Crash Breaker at the earliest opportunity, because this this is incredibly good. Um, like it looks symmetrical, right? It looks like you get plus four power and you're taking four damage. 
That is not how that works. Um, so as we, I think, saw actually with Assault into Focus, right? Because Assault with plus four power has eight power. Uh, focus has two armor, five guard. So you deal eight over two is six, which is six damage. That breaks your guard to five. So Focus with, oh, sorry, Assault with plus four power stuns Focus. Um, I mean, okay, you deal four damage to yourself, but that's four damage that you would have taken from a focus you didn't stun, and the opponent would have drawn a card. Uh, this this is a great example of why symmetrical effects are not symmetrical, right? It's like, I have plus four power means I'm going to stun you if I'm faster than you, and guess what? I'm faster than you, because I'm burnout car. Like, this character's identity is I'm faster than you. My cards are bad, but I'm faster than you. So, plus four power is amazing. It is good that this costs four life, essentially. Um, this seems less good. Like, much less good. But not bad. Sometimes you need it. This is also, this seems like also like the way you win boost for is if the opponent also has speed boosts. Is you stack this on top and you're like, alright, stop that. I'm faster. I insist. But yeah, this, this character is, you, you are faster, which is good because you have to be faster. Unless you're trading paint. That's the one exception. Uh, and then the exceed is like I said before, like that's that's where your power comes from, like your actual ability to kill. If it's not on these, it's which you know, the, these you take damage, which means that although you are doing what you need to be doing to win the game, you can't make too many mistakes and you can't trade down too much, or you're you're still gonna run into trouble. But yeah, Brenda Car was fun. Um, feels crazy because of course this ability massively warps normal interactions. Oh, yeah, that's why. Hmm. Remind me, Burnout Car was supposed to be balanced on uh, Alistair, is that correct? Mm -hmm. All right. No balance considerations. Okay, cool. This character feels not, uh, well, not quite Alice here, but also has a favorable match between Alice, as I think I mentioned, which is kind of funny. Um, but yeah, definitely has the feel of like, my cards have very discrete values. I have my ranged option. I have my long ranged option. Um, I've got a boost that gives me the power that I need. Uh, an assault so that'll be happy to play at every opportunity. And a card I used to trade. And then there's other stuff, but these are the things that are like salience. Those are the cards I care about. We didn't really get to see Missy No Shine. Uh, what's the exceed sign? Oh, sorry. Here you go. <laughs> yes, this one notably does say your next attack is plus one power instead of your attacks have. Um, more and more, I wonder if Moriarty did that on purpose and I just didn't notice. But yeah. So Burnout Car by Blue. Um, some on the front side, but one more speed, which is, like I said before, a huge, huge deal. And also, you start accumulating power for all those cards that you're stealing. So it's definitely in your best interest to get there ASAP. Alright. So like I said, we didn't really get to see Misty No Shine, which is a bit of a shame. Misty No is pretty exciting to me, because they have some really interesting stuff. This, if this is a wild swing, you have plus two power, even if this is invalid. Right? I also like the this is a four special heads up, because the templating isn't, like... You know, Dillany doesn't stick out that well uh, because of the gravity design. These are all black and white, right? There's no big red force icon. Um, then there's the three water guns, which let you set them with another card to modify them. These are like, these are basically like hidden boosts that you play during the set timing, which is neat. Um, it also has weird interactions with forming EXs amongst themselves, because they can't EX. 
right? If you put two copies of this together, they both dis they both get discarded, and you will have plus four speed and minus two range, and your attack is a wild swing, which is like really, really goofy. So like cards that you can't ex without breaking things, but have really interesting properties. I I, I love these. I think they're super cool. Um. Yeah, and then there's extremely janky boosts. Like these boosts all have a cost of the opponent may return a card from their gauge to their hands, which is uh, like I don't even know what's happening there. <laughs> I'll be real. I don't I don't get the theme if there is one. Um, but they are like better better than better than a boost deserves to be because they give the opponent access to recursion in a particular way only works or only matters if the opponent has gauge in the first place and maybe they don't want to recur but it's I don't know, it's interesting I really want to like mess with missing no more because uh, there's a lot more going on here than can be unpacked in one game even more so than, than like sands or was it sands I was talking about? yeah sands like sands sands is one it's like yeah you're not going to do things the first game, not, not that well anyway. Uh, what a nostalgic sprite. <laughs> but yeah, Pound, which has really, really different shapes depending on who initiated. Right, like, this, this card's stats are never what they appear to be. Um, they are always different from this. If you initiate, then its range is, you know, 138 and it has a really brutal hit effect. If they initiate, uh, then it becomes really, really slow and doesn't work at range one, works at range two through four, but actually deals 10 damage. Gosh, this card is interesting. I, I want to see what this character really does. Um, and then the Exceed, which lets you uh, Wild swing with the six from the top card of your deck to within. Well, not, not wild swing, excuse me, it's not a wild swing, that matters. Strike with the six from the top card of your deck and make it considered EX, but like it can still interact with these effects, right? Like that's super, super jank, and I love it. So I'm, I'm excited for Missing No, but I don't really have a sense of what Missing No looks like or does. Alright, uh, so our next character, Doom Guy is uh, by Poltergeist, and yeah, had the like gauge generation for moving, uh, really cool card shapes, infighting seems like it shouldn't be free, um, infighting feels like the evil within of this kit, right, it's, it's the boost that you play, sorry, evil within is in uh, Imogene's kit, it's the boost that answers matchups that you otherwise can't handle. Um, which is interesting. Yeah, but like, Overliable, good card. Sexual Swiping, hilariously unfair, except, like, very, very specific in what it does, and also is probably worth worth it for the cost. Because, like, this this is a... introduces a during-the-range-check <laughs> timing. Uh, so, something in common a lot of these, actually, which makes sense, right? Because these were, these were put together largely for April 1st. Not entirely, but mostly for April 1st. Um, so this messing with cards at timings that cards aren't supposed to be activating is a has popped up a lot because, well, it, it feels like a thing that you shouldn't be doing because it's a thing you shouldn't do. So of course we're going to do it. So, you know, it's a good day to do it if you're ever going to pick one. Uh, Boom is a really good card. Um, this, this is quite funny to me. This is actually very similar to a card in a kit, uh, in one of my custom kits, which is called Big Dumb Swing. So yeah, just like deal a bunch of damage. I like it. Uh, Wall Run is undercosted, but interesting. Like, it's clearly very good, but it just makes the opponent hook the center, which actually fits this guy's ranges very, very well. Like, he wants you about range four is what it seems like. Well, one or four. Um... Yeah, man, there's a lot of cool stuff going on here, but like mostly ranged character, some very specific utility effects, and then piles of stats to throw at you the rest of the time. 
Uh, Doom is fun. Uh, not sure exceeding was worth it. I think I would probably would have just thrown more resources at the ultras. Uh, because we've seen these ultras lately. Oof. Uh, Trillion is the strongest character I've ever seen. Um, if you weren't watching the Trillion game and you want to know what Trillion's like, uh, just imagine that you have plus four power, plus two armor, plus three guard for the rest of the game. Cool. Fun though. Like, decently fun. Just, you are uh, a god among ants. Nobody, nobody's gonna take that on. I do want to see the Trillian versus Rubel fight, but like, that's gonna be hard to actually do. Um, she's incredibly strong. Anyway. Uh, Zoe uh, also has abusive life regeneration shenanigans, but not not really match for Zengetsu, I think. It's funny, like, his ability is very good. Uh, not amazing, but just, like, solidly, I think, like, a little above average. Uh, and then he exceeds... And it's after resolving an action that doesn't cause a strike. You may draw a card and strike. And things get nutty. Oh man, that felt so good. So good. But yeah, you'll note you'll note something, right? Like, where's his gauge generation? Um That's a hit effect. And Yep, that's it. Yeah, he's got a hit effect in this boost over here. That's the only gauge generation he has. Uh, he has an above curve card here, mind you, so he's like pretty guaranteed to get the hit on this. Um, but yeah, other than that, you kind of have to play honestly. Like some really good card shapes here. Uh, some really good boosts here. I, I, I had a ton of fun with this guy. He's clearly extremely strong, but I had a ton of fun with him. I'm wondering how much it's going to hold him back to have to exceed before he can do all of his stuff. Uh, hard to say. You know, it took people a while to break Juno, so. But he definitely feels like he is of that tier. Yeah, and then, then you exceeded, and then, like, so funnily enough, I when I when I exceeded as in Getsu, I felt like I was a Season 5 character in Overdrive. Right? It's just like, okay... What are the pieces in my hand that I can use to assemble a combo that will just rip my opponent in half and bring down the moon? Um, and it was managing momentum and resources and then, like, doing the follow-up in a way that was so efficient that that part felt like a Season 2 character, where it's like, oh, wait, this doesn't actually cost me, in the long run, what it should. Um, but, man... The, the turn where I was like, huh, I don't really have to see your hand to know that I can kill you, but if I do this, uh, then you're already dead. And saw the hand, saw the normals, gained advantage in a way that was unavoidable, repositioned in a way that was unavoidable, like, got the reading into the guaranteed lethal. That was such an amazing and really satisfying way to end the game. Uh, and then Soul, I've talked about before, I really love Soul. Uh, Eugenia is actually a rough matchup because Soul is a season 2 character, like he's a 7th cross character. He likes having certain cards in hands. He wants to have certain options. Eugenia is very good at disrupting people who wants to have certain hand shapes. Um, and that did happen to me. I suffered for it. I still killed her, but, like, it took me... I, I lost several of my really good setup options early, and then I needed to get Sidewinder. Uh... Like that's that's what let me come back essentially uh, because even though I lost hard on that strike, I got the transform, and I needed that pretty bad. But yeah, still still love Soul, still one of my favorites, probably still my favorite custom that I've played. Um, certainly the ones I hadn't designed. Oh, look at this! There's a guy over here. Uh, what's this guy? What's this guy do? Um, well, this is Giant Spearman. Uh, Giant Spearman 
is uh he's like he's like a joke he's like in the world of joke characters he is the boss character of joke characters he is astonishingly bad um still playable though like not not literally unplayable just the jankest most red horizon of, of boss characters um all right so your exceed cost is just bonus point of damage you've taken you and your opponent's wild swings have hit plus two power uh which in the mirror match is rock attack like i said you're just hurling nukes at each other and seeing what happens but yeah so like your exceed cost is 15 so basically this is you can exceed it free you can see it for free at half life um gordon freeman custom win but uh what's the exceed mode then Angry Spearman, you turn red. When you can see return all copies of Spike from any area to your hands, but near your opponent wild swing and whenever you reveal Spike, your attack speed plus two power. Exit the trigger each time it would occur. Doesn't really template doesn't make all that much sense, but it's fine. So your wild swings. I think, so the intent here is when you when you set a wild swing, like your wild swings have hit plus two power. When your opponent's attack is a wild swing, your attacks have hit plus two power. And when you reveal Spike, your attacks have hit plus two power. Like, those three things are all true. Are each true. So you can have up to plus six power, basically. Um, off of this alone. I mean, plus six power is a lot. Plus two power is a decent amount, honestly. Like, your wild swings plus two power? Not bad. Um, yeah, like, front side ability is okay. But it also buffs the opponent. Which is obviously clearly, like, very, very awkward. Uh, is he fast, though? Uh, I mean, he's got on curve, under curve, mm, no curve, doesn't count, comically under curve, above curve, whatever that is. Um, so, he has okay wild swings, but they don't have very consistent ranges. It looks like his range is mostly two. Um, Alright, so Phoenix Descent. Bad damage. Guard it doesn't really need, and that doesn't really do much for it. Not necessarily good positioning. Boost that does nothing. Literally nothing. Very, very silly. Uh, mostly an evasive tool for this after effects. Attack is, like, not the worst thing. In that it does beat cross or it does beat focus at range one, but still pretty bad. Barricade is obviously like not a thing; it's actually useless. Both both Zane and I boosted it, but only as like he. I don't think he realized what it did, but I sure as heck did, and I still boosted it because if you're playing Giant Spear Man, you cannot take things seriously. Uh, there's no purpose to it. Uh, Mini game, which is a which has a reveal timing, just like several things we've seen today, which mess with the game's pacing and slow it down in weird ways, but whatever, it's fine. Uh, your opponent gets the number between 0 to 3, and then you reveal your hand, if you have different number of spikes, and that number of hits. Uh, yeah, that's cute. It's a pity that the attack's actual hit effects, or sorry, the attack's actual value is so low, it's only 2 damage. Right, at 3, this would be a playable card. Um, uh, 1 on 1. Again, completely useless, comically bad boost. Has maybe, like, one niche use, which is that you're going to deck out, you need to get rid of your normals, you can't move, and you can't change cards. Because um, remember, this does not allow your opponent to discard their hands. Right? You can, you don't even give them a chance to make that mistake. You're instructed to inform your opponent they may discard their hands. Uh, wait, actually... Sorry, never mind. You inform your opponent they may discard your hands. Uh, but not only do they not get to do it, if they did, you'd still have no hands. Um... Yeah, uh, Roll Dankle Grab is just really, really awkward before Advance 4. After Retreat 1, it does set up range 2. Um, but that's okay, because this has the actual playable boost on it, right? Like, none of these boosts are playable. But this one is. When you reveal your attack, look at the top right opponent's deck. You then Whisper Speed into their ear, which is like, whatever. But a little bit of foreknowledge and potentially reading setup, like, if you... Because you, you have about a 50-50 chance of getting a normal, right? Like... If you don't care about any other information, you just look at it that way. 16 out of 30 cards are normals. Which means this, in advance of a reading, is, is potentially quite good. Because one turn after they draw, you can then hit them with it. And they can't do anything to get rid of it, importantly. Alright, uh, self-sling slash. 
uh, like, actually not a bad special. Um, comic comically a good special in a lot of cases because if it works, it's hilariously punishing and it's not too hard to make it work. Uh, he's not very good at forcing discards. He does have one force discard effect, but it's on an attack that mostly isn't going to hit anyway. Uh, drops power pretty sharply, so if people are actually like paying attention to keeping their resources high, it's obnoxious. Uh, sorry, no, not obnoxious. It's unplayable. But, you know, decently often you can be at like a middling amount of hand size and then you can pop a reading into, into block or something and this will do a job. So yeah, this does a job. It's not bad. Uh, just don't let the after hit you. Um, that would be bad. Auto attack, which does nothing. Um, well, no, th this boost has a this boost has a has a niche use in the Clippy matchup. All right, another timeline and face room. All right, face room is legendary taunt, right? Like it's a weird def thing that's not even a good defensive option, but it lets you play other attacks as its after effect. Unlike legendary taunt, it doesn't just win. You have to be at range two or three when this happens, uh, which is really awkward. Uh, but that's okay. It doesn't matter. It has this boost on it. This boost is good. This boost says, pick your favorite boost from your gauge and play that instead. Because, as, uh, as we saw in that game, right? Replace this with a card from your gauge does not mean add a card from your gauge to your hands. It means remove this from your boost area and put into your boost area a card from your gauge. It is now resolving. So, yeah. Like, hit with sweep. Now you can play. Now this is light. Or whatever. It costs you a gauge, but honestly, what else are you doing with gauge? Oh, wait. Hi. This is the only thing you're doing with gauge. 1 to 4, 3, 6. A uh, above average attack shape. For an ultra, mediocre. Um, hit, return all copies of Spike to your hand, reset starting positions. Notably, at starting positions, by the way, Spike doesn't hit, so that has questionable value. But, you know, it's still two cards to your hands, um, which you can then spend as a resource, especially if you use this defensively, because this is above curve at, three, at range 3 and 4. So, another timeline, not actually bad. Um, I put this to good use for disrupting the position uh, in a game that I played the other day, in fact, so. Um, yeah, this is a fine ultra. And the boost, uh, practically speaking, doesn't exist. Uh, I, I've, I, when, I played Giants, when I played into Giant Spearman the other day, uh, I just let my opponent take no damage from the attack, because I refuse to admit. Um, but, like, theoretically, this is functionally useless, right? It's only functional if your opponent decides to just go along with it for, for kicks. Which, you know, I did, because it's Giant Spearman. What, what are you going to do? Alright. Mirror matchup? Very stupid. Would not recommend. Um, not the worst, probably, but better off playing him into a real character.